What's cracking, me gente? You guys already know this show, boy D. Once again, coming by to shoot you guys on a little bit of love and a little bit of knowledge. <clears throat> Today, I have a special guest. You guys can see it. You guys have been to his channel. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, I will let him do it. The introduction to his channel. But please make sure you check it out. Without further ado, let's get to it. What's cracking, my boy? What's up, my boy? ¿Cómo Aquí tranquilos. Tell the gente who your channel is and who you are, my boy. <clears throat> All right, so they call me Listo from Upstate Point of View, and yeah, let's let's get this let's get this done. All right, today I'm gonna do it like I told you guys from the very beginning of my channel. I don't really do a lot of interviews, but this interview is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna get into a little bit depths of lifestyle, different choices that we make from different perspectives. And uh, we're going to analyze what is being seen or what is to make decisions that sometimes we come to regret. And um, this interview, I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys enjoy it. And we're going to kick it off. So the first question that I ask my boy, I know upstate point of view. Upstate is a word that a lot of homies from upstate. Homies, I mean, by like South Siders, Sureños, they use them. What prop you to get that name or what what... What gave you the motivation for the name? Um, so <clears throat> the funny thing is when I when I made the channel, the first the first name I came up with was uh what was it? It was something to do with the black sheep. Cause I always thought of myself as the black sheep of the family because as I told you, you know what I'm saying, in the backgrounds, my family, they're northerners. I was one of two, maybe well, of the ones that are around the family, there's only two upstate Sureños. My me, my cousin, and um he kind of did his own thing. He went his own route. He stopped doing what he was doing, and I kept it, kept it going. So I was going to call it the Black Sheep, something to do with the Black Sheep. But then I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm making the channel for the purpose of people understanding upstaters more. So I was like, I'm going to just call it Upstate Point of View. That's right. And and a lot of people have misconception. We're going to run back to the, <clears throat> that little pause right there where you say about your family. We're going to get into yeah. the depths and of that, you being the one of the only Sureños from your family and everybody else being an, an ordinary. But right. before we get to there, um, you grew up where? Uh, San Jose, East San Jose. East San Jose. Yeah. Was that influence your choice of who you became at one point of time or of anything had to do with just who you were surrounded with? Um. So the lifestyle I chose came from... Um, I would say more so, realistically speaking, without trying to sound too, you know what I'm saying? Because I know people don't like the when, when upstaters say they were pushed to be upstaters, but I kind of was pushed this route because I lived in a Norteño neighborhood as well growing up. Hmm. So it was like a, a choice either become one of them or become against them. And, and, and sometimes much. people, I guess, misunderstand the, the sense of upstater because they look at it like we sold out or we're pushing yeah. a different bandera as we should have been northerners as we in the northern california and yeah. that perspective has been pushed around a lot of content creators youtubers and a lot of other people speak up like why you guys chose to be something that was from down south instead of repping something from your area mm -hmm. do yeah. you think that applies to you as well or no uh realistically yeah i um i do think people have a point. I do think they have a very valid point when they mention that. But at the same time, I always I always refer back to the same thing and I'll, I let it be known why. But I do think I do think that it does apply somehow, some way. Okay. You being surrounded by old northerners, even in your family, what was the growing up, what was the morals and values that your family, mother, father stole on your, the people around you, your whole family and pro? <clears throat> so, I guess the main thing that that was instilled in me from a very young age from both my parents, because I did grow up in a family with both parents, um, was for one, respect was the biggest thing. You don't disrespect anybody. I was even taught if somebody disrespects you, give them a chance to give you that respect again. And then if they don't, then then you can disrespect back, you know, so respect was a big thing. And then working hard was another like my 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 parents. They're both very hard workers. You know what I'm saying? They, uh, they've worked their whole lives from being kids in Mexico to when they came out here. So you come from a Mexican background, basically. Yes, sir. 
and and it's a misconception that people have that some of us Latinos, and I say as Latinos as using the the, the mm -hmm. word Latinos as referring to everybody that comes from the culture, this Spanish speaking household. Yeah, yeah. And um I don't refer to as Hispanic because the meaning of that word is kind of it's kind of a insulting, I say. I would say insulting, at least to me, the way I interpret it, because they make it seem like <clears throat> it, it's a different meaning than, than Latinos. But you right. grew up in the parents with two, so your mother, your father raised you. What prompted you to go around game banging the life of the streets when you have two parents at home that loved you and took care of you? That's a, that's a really good question because uh, I haven't made that video yet, but I will. I will one day. But uh, Everybody thinks that you need to be in a broken home as far as maybe just the mom or just the dad, the gangbang. But um, in reality, like I said, you know, it wasn't it wasn't that I was looking to be in a gang or nothing like that. In reality, I was just getting basically bullied into and I got pushed into what I what I became. Bully on the sense of a school or like by your family mm -hmm. or what do you mean? No, by uh, not even in school, leaving school, the area that I lived in. Um, so mm. on my way home, at least not even exaggerating, at least three, four times a week, I'd get jumped by the middle schoolers and the high schoolers when I was in elementary, when I was about ten, nine, ten years old. So it was a, it was a route. There was either I stand up for myself, or I just choose to keep taking it and getting punched every day like a punching bag. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a hard choice and then it's, it's a culture that a lot of us happen to live and and that's why it's a misperception and misconception that people have that we have to come from a broken home or a broken household yeah. or or a traumatizing household for us to choose game banging yours is yeah. a different case you came from a household that you have two parents a mother that love you a dad that loves you i believe so yeah and they raise you the best way they could with whatever they have at their hands at the disposals at that time. Right. And they gave you the best life they could. <clears throat> was there came a point in your life when you you stopped and thought about like, is this the right choice that I'm thinking? How will my parents, especially my mother? Cause you know, mothers always, they got the mother instinct. They're always the yep. most protective ones. That that is the disciplinary. But did it come a point in your life when you said, I shouldn't be doing this because I put my mom through a lot of pain. Yeah, definitely. A, a lot of times growing up, there was a lot of times from even as early as like 13, 14 years old when I was doing things and I was getting in trouble for it. Um, I always thought about that. Like, damn, like my mom doesn't deserve this. You know what I'm saying? Like my dad, he was more a tough love type of guy. He never showed emotions growing up. He never, uh, and this is one thing that everybody trips out on. Every time I'd get in trouble, even as a little kid, like, I, like in school, you know how they would make you call the, the uh your parents in front of the whole class yeah everybody that got in trouble before me that had a call was like okay i did this this and that okay mom bye love you i would never do that i would always say oh i did this i did that and then they'd be like and then i, I just say okay bye i never gave the i love you's i never did none of that stuff so i grew up a little bit with tough love but from my mom yeah I, I did think about that a lot every time every time i even when i didn't get caught up and i did something stupid i'd be like damn bro like if i get caught up like my mom's gonna be in, like she's gonna be hurting because of me because of me and and it's a trip because your background is not you know, in a sense similar to mine because we grew up in a household with four boys and we never we were never thought to procrastinate or basically like express our feelings towards each other like mom yeah. would love, brother would love it so it's a difficult it, it comes difficulty and difference when you have to say that to so you you are around your mother you can tell her you love her because you're pops is what we call old school mexican dad yeah yeah that the uh, raise the kids with the iron fist the beliefs and discipline <clears throat> different organizing and belief on if you fuck up you got something coming yeah exactly was, was your mother the one the pacif uh wanted to say not the peacemaker but pacifier but like was she the one like every time your dad would get on your helmet was she the one to come be like me or he's doing it for the right reason. He wants something, but was she that type of type? Of dude, like you were wrong, you deserve that. Definitely, yeah. Well, she was a little bit of both. She was the the one that was the mediator. She was like the behind behind his back. He would tell me, okay, you know what? Maybe he was a little overboard. He over exaggerated. But to his face, she always told me like, 
listen to your dad. He has he has a point. Like she she played both sides, but I think she she did it in the right way. She never took sides basically in front of him. He never she never did respect to her husband by going yeah, no, against him. Never. Yeah. But always came back to the room and be like, Mijo, there was a better way that he can go on about it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's common in Latinos. I think that's something that a lot of mothers practice because I think the way they were raised, <laughs> the way they were taught to respect their husband, the old school um way that they got raised, I think that they were thought like you you shouldn't go against your husband and yeah, you should always exactly. have his back in front of everybody else, but behind closed doors, you can yeah. disagree to an extent. <clears throat> and yeah. I, I think that has a lot to do with the way they were raised from the early age of grandmother to the nanas and whatever, you know? Yeah. You grew up as a Jose, getting bullied, getting beat up. Then you decide to stand up for yourself. Yeah. At what age <clears throat> did you became involved with the gangs? With actual gangs or just representing what I thought I was, what I thought was, you know, saying what I was doing. Both. Let's say what age, so what, what my age first, you start representing, and then what, what age do you actually became involved with the gangs? At ten years old is the first time that I just said, you know, we're like, "F it." I'm already getting beat up for it. They're calling me this. They're calling me that. So I'm gonna become that. Like I even said it in a video before. The Northerners would that would jump me. They would call me the S word. You know what I'm saying? They would call me a scrap. <clears throat> Me not knowing what the hell that was, I just know they didn't like them. I would say, well, yeah, I am one then. Like, I would say I'm a scrap. There was times where I would get checked. Like, oh, what do you bang? I would say, oh, I'm a scrap. I would say that because I didn't understand what that was. At 10 years old, obviously, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's funny because it's like on your mind, we we, got, we still have that innocence of yeah, exactly. kid mind. Yeah. And we think it's just probably just a word that means that there are something you know, that just yeah. the people that don't like, and that's what we yeah. claim to be. Yeah. Well, at what age do you decide, F and fuck it, I'm just going to do what I have to do and become a gang member? About that time, when I was about 10, I started fighting back. Well, I can't say it was nothing serious. It was like, you know, in school, gang banging, like I'd get to school, start throwing up the 31. We wouldn't even throw up the 13. We'd throw up the 31 at the time because we didn't even know. So we'd do that. Um, but more serious was when I was probably like 13. 13 is when I got more involved. Well, now you got involved more, more. What make you choose to go to one side instead of your whole family were northerners? They were, yes. Um, I, I will guess, were respectable, no northerner gang members. They were older yeah. than you, yeah. They see this happen to you. Did they ever try to intervene and say, Look. You should at least become one of us and try to go this route so they don't bully you. So that's the thing is um, they did try, but later on in life, you know, um, around when I started, you know, saying getting not not even involved when I started representing what I was doing, they were not around me. My family was not around me like that. All, all I grew up with was my mom, my dad, my brothers, um, my tia, which was my mom's sister and her two daughters. I grew up with them. They didn't know anything about that stuff. You know what I'm saying? They didn't know. so. Once my uncles that were northerners started coming around, it was already too late. I was already like 13. They would see me. I remember they saw me when uh I got I, I got to my uncle's house and I was wearing a black t-shirt, some some Kathy Dickies and some Converse. My hair slicked back. And the first thing he asked me, like he pulled me to the side, the older one. We call him the OG of the family. He pulls me to the side and he goes, Hey, what's up with you, fool? And I'm like, What do you mean? He's like, Are you are you trying to bang or something? And I was like, nah, like I obviously I denied it, you know. I was like, nah, what the hell? I just like the style. And you know what I'm saying? That's all that really, I don't know. That's all that really, uh, that I can say that they really did at that time to stop anything was just asking me that. And then, like I said, it was too late at that point. I was already too, uh, involved with the neighborhoods around me that were Northerners. They already knew who I was. So basically they lost the bottle, the way, <laughs> which they didn't even know it had begun or started with exactly. before they came exactly. in with you. Yeah, exactly. When your family starts seeing the change, of course, your mother, your father will see the change transpiring. Right. You becoming right. a different person. <clears throat> what did they say to you? What did, what was the pull up? Did they ever try to talk to you out of it? Did they ever try to sit you yeah, down? Yeah, definitely. So <clears throat> my mom was more so, she didn't know what was going on. She didn't have any knowledge about gangs because she came from Mexico. So she had no knowledge of the, of the, of the things I was doing, basically, she didn't know anything like the red, the blue, the numbers. None of, she had no idea. She was innocent. My dad, on the other hand, his brothers were gang members. You know what I'm saying? They were 
my dad's born in Mexico, but his his younger brothers are all born in uh, San Jose. One in Watsonville, the rest in San Jose. And um, so he grew up. Once he came out, he was I, I want to say he was 18 when he came out here, and he's at least I think 15 years older than the than the than the oldest brother. So he came out here, and uh, he basically saw his brothers grow up to be gang members, and um, he knew what was going on. You know what I'm saying? He understood. But he was also kind of, uh, what's the word? He was in denial. He was in denial of it. When I when he would ask me, oh, was, are you in a gang? I would tell him no, and he would believe it. Even though at school they would tell him, like, oh, your son's in a gang. Every time he gets into a fight, it's because they're calling him this word, and he's calling him that word, and they're fighting because of it. And he would say, nah, he, he's not in a gang. They're just probably picking on him or something. Denial. So he was in denial that you have become something that, he had saw his brothers become, but he didn't Definitely. want to accept that either because a lot he didn't of want to accept it. So you become involved with the Sureño homies, and again, what, what neighborhood mm -hmm. did you affiliate yourself with at that time? Uh, so no, at the time, I was only um, I wasn't really hanging out with neighborhoods. I was hanging out with the kids that were like, because like I said, I was only like thirteen. From ten to thirteen, I didn't claim a neighborhood. I didn't affiliate myself with anybody. I was just. I would go to neighborhoods and hang out with them, but I, I wasn't saying, I wasn't representing them. I wasn't saying, oh, you know, like I'm, a, I'm from here or I'm representing this, none of that stuff. I was just, like I said, up until 13, I was like an in-school banger. That's what I would call it. I was just banging in school. I wouldn't really go outside and, 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 and put in work like that. No, it wasn't, that wasn't until I was like 14. You, you step off the porch, let's say what we call step off the porch at 14, yeah. you start to do your, whatever you have to do. Yeah. Um, at this point of time, do you feel like you were losing a part of yourself that innocence was going away and you became something else that you once upon a time got to the point where you were like, who the fuck I am? Or like, did you reflect on it? Or what, what transpired? What, what led you to become from an innocent young kid to this? Honestly, I never noticed it. I was, I was, I jumped, how they say, uh, head first. I didn't notice that I was losing my innocence. I kind of, uh, I went from being an innocent little kid that just snapped one day and was like, well, whatever, let's do what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? So I never, I never thought of it like, oh man, like I, I want to be a kid. I never thought of it like that. I just thought I'm doing what I have to do. Do you have anybody around you, your homies from your, maybe the people that you knew that pull you to the side and say you still have time to pull it off, to, to go and walk away? Do you have anybody pulling you to the side like, bro, this is not a life? Do you have any positive feedback like keep going to school do you and let this game bang in for the birth do you, do you have anybody around you aside from your family the your homies that you were hanging out along with that pull you up <clears throat> nah i you know what's funny is uh i'm not sure if i mentioned this in the video but i made a video a while back about uh the neighborhood that gave me the the, the hardest time was called barrio Rio Seco, right and uh the only person that i that i know that I can think of, that I know for a fact, like it stuck with me. It was an old thing from that neighborhood. When I was younger, he would throw rocks at me because I would did school. He would throw rocks at me. He would tell me, hey, get your ass to school. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing? Like, he would try to lecture me in that way. He would throw rocks at me because he didn't know what I was at the time. He was he was already like a, I don't know, like an 18, 19 year old, I want to say. He didn't think anything of this little kid that was wearing, you know what I'm saying, Adidas and Chucks and those, you know what I'm saying? Like things like that. He didn't He didn't know anything. Uh, and it's basically try to see you make you make your change by pushing you away, like running exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He was like, "Man, get out of here!" Like you know, what I'm saying, like, "Go to school." And I would honestly, there was times where he would throw rocks at me, and I'd be like, "All right, I'm, I'm gonna go to school." You know, like I would, I would show up. And and it's a trip because sometimes that's the way, the best way we can express. Just like you don't know how to learn, you didn't learn. To express yourself, tell your mom you love you, somebody in the other side of town, on the other neighborhood, the rival gang, probably yeah. they grew up the same way and they didn't know how to <clears> tell you, hey, little kid, believe me, this is not a life. The only way they can yeah. be getting your ass and tell you, go to school, man, this is not a life. And sometimes that's how I see it. Yeah, sometimes it transpires that way because I had those I had those incidents <clears> and, and we don't learn from them until probably it's a little bit too late. Yeah. So you decide to become a game member at 13, 14 years old, you start doing your thing. Do you ever want to stop to say, you know what, maybe I, I am going down the wrong path or I am choosing the wrong team? Nah, I never once thought to myself like, like, damn, 
it would be easier if I was on that side. I never thought that. Or I never thought like, damn, I should be on my family side. Like I never thought any of that. I kind of was like, I said I was head first. I had my friends and I've always been very loyal. I've always been very um if if I ever see one of my homies, you know what I'm saying, get picked on or whatever, or 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 like, and I'm talking about before the gangs, like when I was a little kid, if I ever saw somebody that was my friend get picked on, I would jump in for them. I was always very loyal like that. So my loyalty never let me think like, oh man, I'm on the wrong side. I'm from Northern California. I should be on their side. I should wear more red. Like things I ne that never crossed my mind. So there you come to a point where you and you you did in the gang game bang and your family find your uncles, your cousins from the other side find out that you're a gang member. How did that conversation went or how did that transpire, that, that little situation transpire? Did it come out of you or did they told them that you were on the wrong side of the town, as they can call it? Or how did that, they can call um, They found out because, I let them know, honestly. I, I, I let my family know when, uh, when, uh, when I was about, I don't know, maybe 16. And it happened because of my dad, actually, which is a funny story that, I didn't even remember this, honestly. I didn't remember till right now. But uh, <clears throat> so we went to a we went we went to a family party, and me and my dad we stopped at a store to to buy a, a Christmas. I mean, uh, uh, like a birthday gift. I want to say, and there was a northerner in there, and he he like was looking at me. You know, he was mugging me basically. Yeah. And because back then I'm not gonna lie, I would have dressed in like the, the dickies and the you know what I'm saying? all that stuff. Yeah. He was looking at me, so I hit him up instead of him hitting me up. I hit him up in front of my dad. You know, I was like, I hit him up. Hey, where you from? You know, all that, all that stuff. Dude ended up, he ended up backing down. He didn't say where he was from, none of that. He didn't say he was a northerner, but I knew he was. You know what I'm saying? I, I knew he was. Excuse me. Um, And my dad got mad. He told me once we got to the party, he was like, he basically told me he was embarrassed that I was his son, you know? And that, that hurt me. I was like, damn, you know, like, like that's crazy. Like, I never, I never thought I'd hear something like that from my dad. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I, I, I'm. I'm just getting off from being sick. <laughs> it's all good. It's so, all good. You know. So once we get over from the party, whatever we get, we get home. He asked me again. He said, "No, no, no, my bad." He he said it again. He was like, "Um, he's like, oh, te tengo no me da vergüenza que seas mi hijo, right?" He said it like that, and I was like, "Damn, like that that hit me." You know, what I'm saying it hit me hard. Like I was like, "Damn, I never thought my dad could say something like th like that to me." And finally, he asked me. He's like, "Well, so you're in the gang?" And I was like, "Well, you're embarrassed of me, right?" And he said, "Yeah, I am." Like he he. He stood on his two feet and he, you know what I'm saying? He stood on business, basically. He said, yes, I am embarrassed. And I said, all right, well, I was like, entonces sí, like, soy sureño. And he looked at me and he was like, like, he kind of just paused and he was like, oh, he's like, okay, get out of my house. And I was like, all right, cool. So I, I went inside, I started packing my things and whatnot, and my mom started crying. And she goes, mijo, no te vayas, like, no quiero que te pase algo, like, things like that, you know, like, like for yeah. the people that don't speak English, I mean, uh, Spanish. She basically, my dad asked me if I was in the gang and I said, yes. You know, like he said, I said, so you're embarrassed of me? Okay. Well, then that means yes. You know, I'm not going to deny it anymore. I'm a Southerner. And um, my mom, well, he, he kicked me out. He said, okay, get your things and get out of my house. And my mom started crying because I started packing my things and was like, oh, you know, don't go. Something's going to happen to you. I don't want anything to happen to you. And uh, I hugged her and I said, mom, I love you, but I'm like, I'm out. I'm not going to be here no more if my dad doesn't want me. Here. She ended up talking to him. She cooled him down. I didn't go anywhere. Well. I did actually. My my uncle picked me up. My my northerner uncle, the OG of the family, he ended up picking me up. I stayed with him for oh, I want to say two weeks. That was the first time that I stayed with him. I stayed with him for about two weeks. Everything calmed down. I was able to talk. But within those two weeks, my uncle asked me. He said, "Hey, fool, so like," and he said it jokingly, you know. So I don't want the, if any homies watch this, any upstaters down south, anybody. He jokingly, he's like, "Hey, fool, so you really a scrap?" And I was like, I laughed, you know. I was like, yeah, you know, like I'm a Southsider. And he was like, all right, like that's that's it. Like, he didn't he didn't get mad at me or nothing. He, I said, yeah, and he was like, well, all right. And that was it. That was all that really happened about that. And people before even brother, people should don't take <laughs> words that we're saying in this interview, the derogatory as the respectful. We are interpreting a, a story, and sometimes your words get used like that. So so yeah, I, like we both know we got homes <clears throat> around the areas. Yeah. Don't take it wrong. We're not respecting organizations any sustenance. It's just for the benefit of the story, we like to give details. And I had told you before, I encourage you to give details, to be be finessed with the story. And sometimes words yeah. come out like that for people yeah. that don't understand what those mean. Sometimes they're derogatory terms for enemy gang members. They, they exist all over the thing. So <clears throat> don't not yeah. take it respectful. It's not being to be respectful. We put in this interview out there so everybody else out there can see 
how one kid from being bullied can make a decision to decide to be something and yeah. the consequence that can come behind Ooh. it because you chose you chose after being bullied so much to stand up which is yeah. something that i think any man or any kid would have done yeah. now you decide to go live with somebody that was your so called enemy that we yeah. they drew this shit to us and <clears throat> this is why our message always been the drill a perspective in our head this is your enemy this is your enemy without really people out there gambling and picking up flags that don't really know the history behind it mm -hmm. and they decide to come and say stuff or represent stuff that they don't really know the depth of it right yeah so you go and live with this uncle that you're supposed to bang against but here yeah, is exactly. the only person that is doing you a favor or solid by bringing you to his house and letting you stay with him. He asks you a question, you answer to him. He could have reacted <clears throat> a whole different way. Things could have went yeah. south yeah. from there. He could have just said, you know what? I fuck get get out of my get house. Get out of my house. Yeah. You, he could have said that. You. Whatever could try to transpire. He chose yeah. not to. Yeah. Did that tell you anything that probably the love was still there from your family and the, the flags and the numbers didn't matter to him as much Definitely. as it matter with somebody else? 